Hello everyone, welcome to another weekly reading vlog. Although today's weekly reading vlog is not one of your usual ones because I am continuing my series where I read certain colors from my physical TBR and today we are going to be reading The Color Blue. I'm so excited. I have so many blue books that I want to read and I'm actually in the middle of two blue books already so I'm kind of like this is a perfect opportunity to get through my currently reading list and also like read a bunch of books from my physical TBR like it's so fun. I will link all the other videos that I have done in this series in the description box below. I think I've done pink, purple, green, yellow, maybe. I think those are the only colors I've done. And now we're doing blue. So I'm really excited. It's been too long since I've done one of these videos. So I do have a really nice, exciting TBR here by me. I do want to share the books I'm currently in the middle of. And if you watch my most recent weekly reading vlog, you will probably know what those books are because I haven't finished those books that I was reading last week. We have The American Roommate Experiment. I am nearly finished this one though. I'm on page 284. So I think I have like a hundred pages left. And my plan is to definitely finish this one tonight and then I can move on to some of the other books that I've selected but this is a really fun like friends to lovers false proximity romance which I'm really enjoying I don't think I'm going to be giving it more than a three star just because it's not really doing anything like new and exciting for me but it is like an enjoyable enough time the unfortunate thing for this one is that I just picked it up when I was in the middle of a, like a lot of mental stress and a bit of like a reading slump so it's taken me a while to read it but I will finally be finishing it tonight for sure, I promise that it will happen. And I'm also in the middle of a book on my Kindle, which is the new Freedom McFadden book, The Teacher. And this is a blue cover, right? So I didn't even plan this. I didn't even plan to be reading these two blue books at the same time, but I'm 60% of the way through this one. And this one is like a really convoluted and difficult to explain. I am enjoying it though, but it's definitely not like my favorite Freedom McFadden I've ever read. There's a lot of like cheating. There's a lot of fucking pedophilia. Like it's not, a super fun time but I'm excited to see like the twist that Frida will do I mean with this one this is probably like the least invested I have ever been in a Frida McFadden novel but I'm also gonna try finish this one tonight because you know it's if I'm 60% of the way through it won't take me long to finish it at all so yeah my plan tonight is to finish the two blue books I'm in the middle of and I think I can do that and I'll explain more about this book once I finished and I'll give like a full review and everything but even more exciting the books that I have planned to read so I have picked out five books um please ignore the pink spine that you are currently seeing because the book itself does indeed have a blue cover and that is icebreaker by hannah grace i actually put this one on my april tbr so i feel like let's start getting through it i suppose this one i'm really excited for it's like a college sports romance i've been meaning to read it for so long it's like enemies to lovers between a figure skater and an ice hockey player and i just feel like the vibes are going to be so fun i have heard so many good things about this so if i'm still in the romance mood after reading the American Rumor Experiment, this will definitely be a high priority. I also really need to start my reread of Throne of Glass by Sarah J Mass, so I feel like this will be a really nice like fantasy novel to break up some of the newer reads, and especially because it will be a reread, it should be quite easy for me to get through, and I'm hoping to get through the first four books in this series this month, which I personally believe I can do. Also, I have to do it because I need to vlog it for my Patreon. So I feel like this will definitely be a high priority this week, but it will also be like a fun little like trip down memory lane. I first read this like literally like the first month that I started booktube so I feel like this will bring back a lot of that nostalgia for me and I'm really excited for that. I also picked out the smallest book I own on my TBR just as an excuse to get through it as if I don't finish a book this week I will I promise you right now I will but if I don't this is my foolproof plan I'm going to read this little short story that I have I don't know how to pronounce it I've been corrected in my comments before I would be like Galati 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 Galatea I don't know but it's a little short story which is a retelling of a Greek myth that I actually don't even know anything about. So I feel like this will be a really fun little short story and it's literally, how many pages is it? 56 pages. This is my foolproof plan to read at least one book <laughs> this week. So I figured I might as well read this if I'm reading blue books for a week. I have one of the oldest books on my TBR with me, which is an absolutely remarkable thing by Hank Green. I've owned this for so long and I figured that like this week is just, this should be the vlog where I finally read it. I have no idea about this book, but like everyone was reading it when it first came out. And obviously like it first came out a long time ago, so I'm really behind, but I know that it's kind of like about going viral. It's like kind of sci-fi as well. I don't really know, but I'm 
I've heard really positive things, so I figured I should probably read it this week. And then I also have a little YA, like hard-hitting contemporary kind of magical realism vibe, which is If You Could See the Sun by Anne Liang. And this is basically about our main character who is under like immense pressure for like college and stuff, but she starts turning invisible. So there is like that magical realism vibe to it, which I feel like is going to be really exciting. And yeah, I feel like I've chosen a bunch of books that are all really, really different. So I am really excited for reading entirely blue books this week. My plans now, I need to do some editing. Ben is picking up, my ex, Ben, is picking up our couch today. So I have to, I guess, prepare for that. Like, clean the studio so it's easy for them to take it out and then i have to do some editing but i'm hoping that once i've done all my tasks i can just have like the coziest night ever and i'm just hoping that every day this week is going to be a cozy fun vibe where i can read my blue books so yeah i hope you guys enjoy the vlog sorry for the long-winded intro thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoy the vlog and let's read some blue books Good morning guys. Okay, so I didn't end up finishing my books last night. I ended up doing some editing, but I am so nearly finished of the American Roommate Experiment and also The Teacher by Freddie McFadden. So the American Roommate Experiment, I am on page 330. So I have less than 100 pages left and I, I'm getting kind of bored of this now. I'm not gonna lie. Like, I think it's fine, but with this particular novel, I feel like it's taken our characters so long. Like it's been a bit of a slow burn considering like how long it's taken them for them to like get together, I suppose. And now that they kind of have, and I have like 70 pages left, I'm like, oh, there's gonna be a third act breakup. Like what more can we do? I feel like we've waited so long for them to actually like fucking put their asses into gear and like communicate and be like, we have feelings for each other. And now I still have 70 pages to read. I don't know. It's not a bad book by any means, but I just really want to get it done. So I'm going to do that this morning. Also with The Teacher, I am 80% of the way through this one. So I feel like, honestly, I am like done neck and neck with how much I have left to read. This one, I was reading into the early hours of the evening before I physically like could not keep my eyes open any longer. And I feel like this is probably my least favorite Freedom McFadden. I think I said this at the beginning. It just doesn't feel very triumphant. Like I feel like this book is just like bad things happening to people. It's not nice. Like I just can't explain it. So I'm not even gonna bother. I'm gonna finish it and see how it ends up as like a whole novel because maybe the plot twist that I'm sure will be coming will do something to me. Like maybe that will change my perspective. I honestly don't know. In thrillers, there have been plot twists that have literally changed my perspective on the whole book, but we'll see. My plan now is I'm gonna make a coffee and it seems to be a really beautiful day outside. So I'm going to go and finish both of these books in one go, both The American Room Experiment and The Teacher. And then I think I'm going to spend the rest of the day reading as well. And I think I might move on to Throne of Glass. I feel like I am in the mood for the Throne of Glass reread now. I feel like I could do with some fantasy. I'm not sure though. I am just such a mood reader at the moment. So honestly, I could finish these two books and be like, no, I don't want to read Throne of Glass. I want to read something that I haven't even put on my TBR. We're going to see. We're going to see how it goes. But I'm going to make my coffee now. I'm going to go get cozy outside and we're going to finish these two books. And I can do it. I can do it. And then we can start a new book for this week of reading Blue Books. the American Roommate Experiment. I'm kind of stuck between giving it a three or a two. I kind of skimmed the last like 70 pages just because it was just kind of boring. It was just kind of boring. I don't know. Zuko's here though. Come here Zuko. So I have to do some work with Zuko, my dog, and making sure that he's like all good with the cat that I now currently live with. Right Zuko. <laughs> So yeah, I need to do that, but I do want to finish The Teacher now as well. I might chill and before I write this, just try to finish that book and then has sit on this for a bit. See if it's like two or three. I don't know, because three is like a really good rating, but I wouldn't put this with a lot of my three star books, but I also wouldn't put it with a lot of my two star books. Like it wasn't that bad. All right, I'm going to go finish The Teacher and then I'm going to take Zuko for a walk. And then I'll probably start something tonight. Um, I just finished The Teacher. Ooh. 
The Teacher by Freddie McFadden, the Kindle book I was reading. I was gonna give it two stars. I was gonna be generous. I think I'm giving it one. You know how I was like, a plot twist will like make or break a novel? can't deal with it look i know thrillers occasionally are gonna be like a little fucked up no 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 not a fan guys it's like look i'm not gonna lie i wanted to keep reading freedom mcfadden writes very 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 bingeable thrillers and this was no exception like it was a very bingeable thriller but like i just draw the line at like pedophilia there's so much of it in this and ew <laughs> It just was the weakest Freedom McFadden I have ever read and like I feel like the ending was supposed to be like really triumphant but like no it was not good so I never want to speak about this book ever again oh my god um I'm not gonna give up on Frida because I still really like some of her thrillers but this one was just a no I also did decide to give uh American Roommate Experiment two stars as well so I have now finished two books in this reading blog at what cost <laughs> at what cost hang on I'm gonna put you down for a second I'm sorry I ignore my children's pokemon pajamas but yeah so i have finished two books a two star and a one star but i have also made a start on an absolutely remarkable thing by hank green i haven't read much of it i'm only on page 35 but so far i'm quite invested we follow our main character april who is like an art student and one day she comes across this like giant robot statue in the middle of new york city and she calls over her friend who like has a youtube channel and they make this little video and then they like go viral that is kind of all that has happened so far so i don't really know like what the plot is going to be but like so far it's really really interesting i feel like some of the language is a bit dated like i feel like it does feel slightly millennial sometimes which i'm not judging because like as a millennial cusp i get it it's fine but there are some lines that i'm like oh that just screams like language that everyone used in like 2014. however i think this is going to be really fun and interesting so far i really like the writing style i feel like it's really it's first person but it's very like direct to reader which i really like yeah i feel like all these wacky things are going to happen and i'm really excited to keep reading this one so i'm really hoping that this is going to be a big step up from American Roommate Experiment and The Teacher. American Roommate Experiment really wasn't that bad, but like I'm looking, I don't do like half ratings on Goodreads or anything. Like I just go with, by my Goodreads system and I don't do half ratings. And I just like, when I think about some of my three star romances, I just can't put American Roommate Experiment in the same category. But like, it's definitely not like the worst thing I've ever read. The Teacher, yeah, definitely was. But I'm hoping that this one is gonna be a step up. I'm hoping for at least a four star. Like at least give me that, please, blue books. I'm excited, I feel like this one's gonna be really fun. But I've made a cup of tea. I have Zuko sleeping next to me like a gorgeous sweet angel. And I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to finish editing a weekly, my last week's weekly reading vlog and upload that on early access for my Patreon. So I think I'm gonna finish doing that now and then once I've finished that, I'm gonna read more of this and I will let you guys know how it goes. So I'm feeling really good about my reading. Oh, also I had some really exciting news as well. So obviously like I've moved into the studio by myself, which I kind of shared a little bit about in my like life update and everything. And like while it is such an ideal situation to like live in this like two bedroom studio by myself, financially it's not super feasible. But the thing is like this bedroom that I'm in is a bit like shit. Like the only reason I'm using it as my bedroom is because I have all my other stuff in the other room and like all the other rooms and everything. My best friend of 15 years from high school who I have never lived with ever wants somewhere to live and I was like well would you want the shitty little bedroom? She's like I don't care how shit it is. I work full time out of the house. It'd be so fun to live together and like the rent's way cheaper so and I'm like so I think in like three weeks my best friend is moving in. We've never lived together before but we've always like had plans to and then just like something else pops up and like before me and Ben moved in together like she might she was gonna kind of move in but then that like fell through and now I feel like the time is finally here so that is another little life update is that I'm pretty sure my best friend of 15 years we're gonna be living together for the first time and I'm really really excited because we are exactly the same. You'll meet her when she moves in and you know you'll see our mannerisms like she's basically just like a brunette jamie anyway that's another little life update but i'm very excited but yeah i'm gonna get to editing and then hopefully reading and yeah 
Hello everyone, I currently have a dog lying on my lap so if he decides to get up and bump the camera I apologize but I have been doing some reading and <laughs> I've made it through more of An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. I'm on page 120 and I plan to do some more reading of it today before I take Zuko for his W-A-L-K. I can't say the actual word because otherwise he'll go crazy and think that we are going now. But I'm really enjoying this so far. I haven't been able to do as much reading as I would have liked because, and it's gonna sound so trivial, but I currently don't have a couch. So there's nowhere to sit in my living room and I'm trying to like not spend all day in bed. So as much as I'd love to spend all day reading, it's been a little difficult in that sense but i'm getting a couch soon so hopefully more cozy reading vibes who cares i'm really enjoying this book and i hope to read more before we go i'm also doing a twitch stream tonight as well so yeah i don't know how much reading i'll get done tonight hopefully a little bit but this book is so much more about the like trials and tribulations of fame than i thought it would be okay i am kind of sitting where zuko's bed usually is and i think he's a bit pissed off about that so hang on one second i'm just gonna change angles okay it is far more about the trials and tribulations of like all of a sudden like internet fame than I thought it would be. What I do really like about it though is that our main character April seems to be a bit of an unlikable main character. At the beginning of the novel she's very like no I don't want to be in this video like I do, I'm not interested in social media like she's a bit almost pretentious I would say about how she doesn't give a fuck about social media and then she ends up being in this video it ends up going viral like she's getting all these followers on Twitter and she switched her mindset completely and now she's like kind of obsessed with that growth to the point where she is sacrificing like her relationship with this girl Maya. That relationship is kind of going down the toilet because she cares more about her social media following than the relationship and I'm finding that kind of like character journey really interesting and I really do like a character that is making decisions that we as the readers are kind of deeming as like not the right decision or also just someone who's a bit more unlikable and I, I just find characters like that more realistic and it means that i enjoy the book even more there's also the massive sci-fi element to this book like i basically said at the beginning that these big robot statues pop up all around the world and now it seems that they may be aliens and there's some like research to that so i'm enjoying the sci-fi element but also the character study of april like wanting to be the first person to cover each new update with these uh big transformer like statues which they've named the, the Carls. I don't know, it's just really interesting. It's not like anything else that I usually read. So I think that is really what I'm enjoying. Like I'm enjoying the point of difference to this book because you know, it's not within my usual genres and I'm just really liking it. So I'm gonna see how much more I can read before Zooks over here starts pestering me. But yeah, I'm hoping to get to like at least the halfway point before the night is over before I sleep. Yeah, feeling good. Hi Zuko. Hello guys, me and Zuko have been chilling all night. He's lying behind me. He's very camera shy as a dog, um, but I've heard that animals can get camera shy. But what page did I make it up to? I made it up to page 150 before I ended up doing stuff this evening. I feel like now that I'm home and I can be ready for bed, <laughs> I'm gonna try and finish this book now. It's getting really interesting. I feel like I don't have anything to add apart from like what I talked about earlier, you know, like I don't really have anything to expand on from that, but it is getting really interesting and I want to try and finish it tonight and that is my plan. And I think I just wanted to actually film a clip wearing makeup <laughs> before I take it all off because then it would be a waste because no one's seen me with this makeup on today. Yeah, we're gonna finish this book and me and Zuko are chilling. Good morning guys. It's nearly the end of the week. I haven't even really been able to vlog or read that much because Zuko, who's right at my feet, has been quite high maintenance this week. But I have a lot of plans to do a lot of reading today. I really would love to finish an absolutely remarkable thing, which I am now on page 237 of. I have just about 100 pages left. So my plan this morning is, I currently have groceries on the way, so once I arrive, I'm gonna make a coffee and sit and finish this book while I drink that, if Zuko allows me to like not give him attention for a little bit. And then I want to move on to some of my other books that were on my TBR, like I haven't decided which yet. I'm really bad at deciding what to read next before I've even finished the current book. Like I said I was gonna read Jonah Glass, I read this one instead. But I am really enjoying this, but it's a weird one because the enjoyment comes and goes. I feel like the book itself is quite choppy in terms of the points that it's making and the themes and the storyline. Like I feel like I'll be really invested in like one arc of the book and then 
all of a sudden it will like change to you know something else is more at the forefront and I'm not as interested in that and then all of a sudden I'll be like super invested again I yeah it's it's hard to determine like what I'm gonna rate this because there are so many parts of the book where I'm like wow five stars and then parts of the book where I'm like mm, a three stars so I think I just need to like finish it and see it in its entirety and think about it as like a whole piece of literature rather than like think about how I'm feeling like in that current moment but yeah I am finding it really interesting I know there is a sequel I don't know if I'm gonna read the sequel because I'm on a book buying ban so I have to get out from the library and then I'm like well do I care about it that much to like go and read a library book as opposed to like one of the books that's already on my physical TBR I don't know I will see how the book ends I suppose but yeah I'm just loving I think what I'm loving the most is just like the science fiction aspect of it like these like aliens and you know their purpose and the debates around them like whether or not they're dangerous or they're not dangerous I don't know it's a really really interesting time and a really interesting book and like nothing I've read before so yeah I'm gonna start reading this now, wait for my groceries to get here, make a coffee, and finish this. So I think the next time you see me, I will have full thoughts because I would have finally finished this book. So I'm excited. So I just finished an absolutely remarkable thing. Like I literally just finished it just then. It was quite an open ending, which I really liked. Like I really love the mystery of the ending, but also at the same time, I'm like, because I know there's a sequel, like obviously it's not that open ended because there's literally a continuation. But I feel like, I don't know, like I liked this enough to read the sequel, but at the same time, I liked the ending so much that like, I kind of want to leave it at that. Like, I don't know if I want to find out what happens next because I thought that ending was really excellent and really emotional and heartbreaking. I don't know, there's so much packed in this novel that I really am going to have to sit and think about it for a bit and really think about my thoughts and then address my thoughts when I do my April wrap up. I don't know, I really liked it. I'm glad that I finally read it because it's been one of the books on my TBR that's been on there for the longest. And I think I'm going to give it a four star rating because it is now daylight savings. It's going to get dark pretty soon. So I think I am going to take Zuko for his walk. And then when I get back, I really want to read Galatea, this little mini short story. I feel like that'll be a nice good break between this and my next book. And then I want to have a shower and kind of get into bed early and just have like a really nice night of reading. And I don't know what my next book is going to be. I'm going to decide once I finish this one. Okay, I'm going to go walk him now, but third, third book done for this video. And then hopefully this can be the fourth and maybe we can get a fifth tonight because it's literally only like 3.30. So I'll be going to bed early and having a good reading night and I'm excited. <laughs> updates for you also it is the end of the week which concludes the end of another vlog which is this one i don't know why i worded it all like that we have some reading updates so obviously when you last saw me i had finished an absolutely remarkable thing and then i also read galati galatea i still don't know i literally looked up how to pronounce it in the previous like before i filmed the previous clip pronounce it correctly there and it since has left my brain but my god this little short story took me 15 minutes to read really short amount of time it's only 50 pages and the pages look like this five stars <laughs> i don't know how Madeline Miller does this but I actually even though I'm a classics geek I was unaware of this myth which is of Pygmalion and basically Pygmalion is this man who created this statue of this beautiful woman because he didn't like all of like the sex workers obviously he did not call them sex workers because it was like ancient Greece but he didn't like all of the sex workers he thought they were all shameless so he created this like blushing woman this statue and then prayed to the goddess of Venus to bring her to life 
she comes to life they live happily ever after. Madeline Miller has basically in this short story written a direct response to that myth and responding to the misogyny that lies within that myth and this short story follows our woman who Madeline Miller has called or named Galati. Galatea, still don't know, and she is imprisoned by Pygmalion and does anything she can to escape and protect the daughter that they had together. And it's so funny because when I was reading this, I was like, wow, what an incel. Like Pygmalion's such an incel. And then in the author's note at the end, like Madeline Miller goes, the word incel wasn't in like rotation by society uh, by when I was writing this, but I think now that it is and I've published it, it does make sense. And I'm like, oh my God, I was so correct. But it was just beautiful. It was so powerful. I really loved that just in such a short amount of, of words, Mella Miller has created this like feminist masterpiece. I just really, really loved this. And it does make me want to do more research into this myth. It made me think so much harder about like really popular media that like I'm sure like we don't really see as problematic because that media would be considered iconic. But anything where like a man takes a woman under his wing and like gives her a makeover or gives her a new life. Like even, you know, when I was watching Poor Things, the new like Emma Stone movie and stuff, when I watched that in December, like I really liked that movie. But then reading this, I was like, wait, it is like man creates woman, therefore like woman has to answer to man. And yes, Poor Things is much more nuanced than that. But like, it's a really interesting take on that kind of trope, which we see all the time. Like anything to do with like man creating an AI woman or even something like the movie Pretty Woman with Julia Roberts where a man takes a sex worker and like gives her a makeover to look like a rich high society woman. Like it really is made me think about that sort of stuff. And I feel like Madeline Miller has done her job. Like that was her intention. And it was just so beautiful. I really, really liked it. So guys, if you haven't read it, I just really recommend going and reading this short story because it will take 15 minutes out of your day. So loved this, five stars. I then did move on to reading Throne of Glass, but I didn't read as much as I wanted to last night because I ended up getting swept up in hanging out with my flatmates that I live with. So if you guys, I think I've explained this many times in my videos, but if you are unaware, my studio that I have is out the back of a house. There's like a five bedroom villa in front of my studio, but we're all under the same like property, the same lease. So they are like my flatmates. Like I do consider us like living together. Like the laundry's in the main house and stuff like that. Very boring stuff. But like I have known them all for a really long time. But I just want to say, I did end up hanging out with them last night. It was really, really fun. Living here and spending more time with the people in the main house and the flatmates really is such a recipe for mending a broken heart. So if there is anyone out there who's kind of gone through what I've been going through over the past few months, the company of other people genuinely just works wonders. Like I was feeling not like sad yesterday, but there's kind of always this like dull ache, I suppose. And whenever I hang out with other people and I enjoy the time I spend with them, it just like disappears completely. Like it's so out of sight, out of mind. And then I like came back and I was happy and I read Throne of Glass and I was just like in a really positive mood. So if anyone was wondering how I was doing mentally, because obviously I'm so open with you all and I tell you everything about my life, things are going really, really well. I love the people that I live with. But also on top of that, if you're going through what I'm going through, like please reach out to a friend. Just like do something with the company of someone else. Like it genuinely just helps so much. But anyway, that is a really irrelevant update because I did read some of Throne of Glass. I did only get up to page 33. And also this is a reread. I just want to hop back in bed and read more of it. But I can't because I need to walk Zuko and I need to do some work. But like, oh my God, the nostalgic vibes that I am feeling like reading this again. I read this first in 2019, like two months into starting my booktube channel. And this is kind of like taking me back to that era. And it's so exciting and so fun. Basically, this is the first book in like a seven, eight book series. And basically we follow our main character, Selena Sardothian, who is world famous or no, world infamous. She's basically a world renowned assassin. She's considered like one of the most dangerous assassins in the world. But she has recently spent the past year as a slave in the mines as like punishment. But she gets uh, recruited by Dorian and Kale. And the king is basically hosting this competition of like 23 really powerful assassins, 24, including Selena. And they basically have to like, you know, compete in this duel to become the king's like royal assassin. It's just so fun. Like the story starts 
right away like we are not faffing about we are jumping straight into it which is amazing i feel like i'm liking it even more on this reread like i'm really forgetting like now that i've read more fantasy like genuinely there is a reason why this series is so popular because does it have its faults yes but like the world building is so like scattered throughout in a really like kind of genius way and i mean selena is like a bit of a like I've got to roll my eyes sometimes because she's really like, I'm so powerful and dangerous and badass. And we really haven't seen her do anything badass just yet. So I'm like, okay, show it to me then, babe. Prove it. Prove it. But it's so fun. And seeing Dorian and Kale again, like I love these characters. I love the series so much more than like the Akita series. And Throne of Glass, well, I just, I'm getting taken back. To the nostalgia and i'm really loving it so i can't wait to read more but that is my long-winded update of throne of glass <laughs> and i've only read 33 pages but that brings this reading vlog to an end i really hope you enjoyed i didn't read as much as i would have liked to but i still feel like with the exception of the first two books that i read i feel like we read some really quality reads so of course let's do a wrap up we started by finishing the american roommate experiment by elena armis this has been a month in the making like i'm so glad i finally finished this but i did give it two stars it wasn't the most exciting romance i've ever read i just feel like it was a bit bland at the end of the day not like the worst thing i've ever read but yeah and then we read <sighs> The Teacher by Frieda McFadden. One star. I never want to speak about that ever again. One star. And then I read An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green, which I gave four stars. A really good book, really exciting, and like nothing I've read before, very unique. Then I read the name that I don't know how to pronounce. <laughs> this little short story, which I gave five stars. So incredible. And then of course, 33 pages of Throne of Glass. So I'm feeling very proud of myself for reading these books, especially because like, I don't know, I feel like maybe, yeah, I didn't read like the most that I've ever read in a reading vlog, but like I managed to chip off a book that has been in my TBR for like five years, a book that I was struggling to get through in terms of like just reading slump vibes. So like I managed to finish this after like over a month of reading it. I feel good about that. Anyway, that brings us to the end of this reading vlog. I really, really hope you enjoyed. Of course, a cheeky reminder that all my socials are linked down below along with my Patreon. So if you do want more exclusive content from me, all the details are on the page. I have some really exciting reading vlogs coming. I'm so excited to be back into videos. I love you all so much. So I'll see you very, very soon. And let me know in the comments also if you agree with any of my opinions on these books or anything like that. Anyway, love you all so much. I'll see you very soon. Bye.